to my channel. I am Jessie and this is Bobo Stitching Quilt. You can find me on Instagram at um, Bobo underscore Jessie C. Um, welcome to anyone who is new. I'm excited to have you join us and um, for everyone who is returning, welcome back. I hope that everyone's had a good June and um, doing all right, basically, right? Um, so it has been a month since my last update. So today is Friday, July 2nd. Um, I have snuck out of work a little early today, um, getting ready for our long weekend here in the United States and um, decided I should record a floss tube. Clearly my plans to record every other week did not go as planned. <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> yeah. um, maybe for the summer um, maybe we'll do once a month maybe that's my new schedule we'll see I, I you know I obviously got a little bit out of schedule as a result of all the renovations that were happening um, as a re um, when we got damaged during our winter storm here in February and um, and so we'll see we'll see what kind of schedule I get back on I think um, for me maybe a month works I'm not such a pervasive stitcher that Weekly makes sense for me. Um, Bi-weekly does make sense, but uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Anyways, um, but speaking of what the winter storm that happened here in Texas um, in February for us, I am extremely, extremely mindful about the extreme heat that um, my neighbors and friends to the north are currently experiencing. Um, it is not unheard of in Texas, especially where I am, which is right outside of Houston, for us to have 100 degree plus weather um, during the summer with high humidity. It is, um, it's not a norm. I'm not saying we enjoy it. Don't pretend that we do enjoy it. Um, but that being said, we are prepared for it and um, to, for the, well, I shouldn't say that. We did have some brownouts, but, um, you know, we anticipate it every year and it's fully recognizing that the North is under fire basically. And, um, Please be safe. Go to cooling stations. Um, drink plenty of water. Um, it can be just as dangerous to be inside on a hot day in, if you don't have sufficient AC and circulation going. So check on your elderly. Check on um, anyone who may be at risk for heat stroke or heat exhaustion. It is no, it is no joke. I've had heat exhaustion. It is um, not a good feeling. It is um, so... So please, please take care of yourselves. I am thinking of you. Climate change is real, y'all. It's real. That's not even, that's not a political statement. It's just facts. We gotta, we gotta treat it like the crisis that it is. So with that, some stitching. <laughs> I know, what a great segue, you know, but I did want to, I do want to think about everybody up there just as like, we're not used to freezing temperatures down here where, where I am and and I can appreciate like how hard that was for us. I know that we're not used to that heat up there. So, all right. Well, I did get a lot done. June was crazy. I, I like these stats, y'all. I it, it is. I stitched every single day in the month of June. So for so all thirty days, I stitched every day um, a little bit, no matter what, at least an hour. Um, there were some days though that I stitched a lot, like four or five hours in a day and put a lot of stitches in. In total, for my month of June, plus borrowing a day from July, because I had a um, finished fever yesterday, and so I took a day from July to get that finished fever done. And um, But including that yesterday, which probably was about 200 stitches last night, I did 12,173 stitches in the month of June. Who am I? What? That's insane. That's that's a, that's a lot for me. I mean, as you may you may not recall, but for May when I was doing monogamous May, um, it was about seven thousand stitches that I put into my two pieces there. So what? So, anyway, so let let's get going. Um, so I worked on eight projects all together. I have two finishes, a finish for now, and two, two, two new starts. So, so let's, so let's get going. Let's see what's happening. All right. So first 
Um, so June was um, catch up on all your Sal Sal or Sal Sal. Um, I belong to a Facebook group called Stitch All the Things, and that was the event that they hosted um, in the month of June. And uh, I like to believe that I did some stuff on my Sal's, eh, but I did. I did finish and catch up on Sense and Sensibility. So here we are. So here is a finish. Um, oops, let me pull back so you can see the whole thing. All right, so this is on 32 count Belfast linen. Um, this is ice blue by Zweigart. It is not dyed, it's just as it is. Um, it is, um, I did this two over two with the called for DMC. And uh, so yeah, it's, it's a, I will admit that it is a little hard to see the white stitching, the, the blue is very, very pale, um, but in person <laughs> you can see it and so um, I'm, I'm thinking that I'm gonna try something with the finishing um, to see if that will help with the to get the to white to pop up a little bit um, but I am really excited to be done because I finished this literally the day before part one of Little Women came out and um, so but there we go that would be finish number three for the year I don't finish lots of pieces. I do, I stitch bigger things though, so um, that may be it. This wasn't big, but um, but that's, but that was finish number one and give you some stats on things. Now, assuming I count all my stitches correctly, so it's, you know, when you're not using Pattern Keeper to track your stitch count, you know, you're just counting it and you're just like tapping it out. Um, so sometimes you may not be right, but in total, percent of sensibility was 1,208 stitches and I had to do both part two and three, I had already done part one um, coming into, into June. So that is finish number one. Are you ready for finish number two? Finish number two is the border for the Trick or Treat Sampler from Mary Inglebright's Cross Stitch Across the Seasons. Um, it is a book. I already put it away. Let me hear. So, but this was a start and a finish. I was doing this as part of the 30 for 30 creating um, challenge that's hosted by Crafting Geek, uh, which was the challenge was similar to the 25-7, but for the month of June, it was to, um, to do some kind of crafting, whatever it may be. Obviously, I chose cross-stitch for um, 30 minutes every day. <coughs> Excuse me. I've been talking a lot today at work, so I'm a little parched. Um, but the... Um, and so my goal was to work on this, was to do one candy corn a day, um, and then a ghost on each week, weekend day. <coughs> I ended up just stitching one a day as best as I could. I wasn't, I didn't stay up on this all um, the whole month, but I did officially catch up. And here is my finished. See, that's cute. Wee! <laughs> It's hard to see when I'm hiding behind the piece, but there we go. Um, this is on 14 count black Ada, and a little close up of my my little candy corns there. <coughs> I'm sorry, um, but yeah, I started this on June 1st, finished it on July 1st yesterday, um, finishing up the border, and so this is part of a little sampler. And I had already finished the centerpiece, um, so this is the centerpiece of of it that I did probably a couple of years ago, or actually more than a couple of years ago. And let me do some quick fabric origami here. But it is, it will, um, it basically, you cut the border out and use it like a, like a map board. And then your center piece kind of hangs out in the center. If you follow me on Instagram, I actually took a picture um, of what it would look like. Um, in an effort to kind of show you. So super excited. I'm definitely gonna take it to a professional framer to finish it so that way it gets done um, as best as it can. I'm, I don't trust my skill set. I'm hoping that um, that everything works out okay. I don't, this is like mystery Ada. So I don't know if the Ada brand company makes a difference. This is, um, you know, but, but this I did two over two, two over one with the called for DMC um, on 14 count Black Ada from Swigart. 
And um, what's interesting is that I, because I stitched the center for, I was like, why is the coverage on this not as good as it is on my center piece? And I was like, like you can see, like it's so like densely, the coverage is really thick here. And on here it's not. I'm like, oh, is it the fabric? No, silly Jesse. I didn't re I didn't realize until much much later when I was pretty much almost done with the with the border that I actually stitched this three with three strings <laughs> and so that's why it looks so much thicker. I actually thought about whether or not I wanted to go over with um with another strand or two to real to give it the same kind of coverage and I actually was okay with it. I felt like you know yeah the coverage is not as good but it's it's a border it's going to be matted up. And, um, and it kind of, and I think it'll, I think, let's see, that it will create a little bit of, um, some dimension, I hope. So, but I'm super excited. Um, I'm pretty sure Michael has a coupon going on. So, um, we'll see if I can get to, get to, to get to Michael's and see if they can, if they can finish it for me. And if not, there is a custom framer here where I am. That um, I, I've never used them before, but on their website, they said that they can definitely help with different types of needlework um, framing. And so we'll see if they can help if Michaels can't do it. So. Super excited! Two finishes! Blah, blah, blah. Uh, again, the math, if I calculate everything, it, this in total, oops, was 5,000. It's about 5,000 stitches, like 5,098, something like that. So, um, again, if I did the, if I calculated it correctly. So, but that's, woo, so excited about that. Um, it, it is a good way. Like, you can see why everyone is kind of focusing and in, in doing the 25-7 challenge and, and everything. Because it definitely, you get a lot done just by doing that little bit every day. Now, to be fair, I don't want to... I don't want to pretend that each one of those candy corns only took me half an hour. It did not. It took me about 45 minutes to an hour per candy corn, depending on the candy corn, you know, so, uh, you know, but, but my goal was to do a candy corn a day, not necessarily just 30 minutes, but that's what I did for the 30 for 30 challenge. So, whoop, whoop. All right. Next up is, um, well, as I said, I finished, um, Sense and Sensibility the day before Part one of Little Women came out. Um, and so that is my next new start. I don't have a, a finish of what it, picture of what it will look like when it's done. And I don't need one because this is a finish for now. So the book clubs are by, um, it's a stitching book club on Instagram. And um, it is, you can purchase the, the pattern and the stitch along from Sapphire, um, Oh goodness. Sapphire Mountain Crafts? Mountain Hand Crafts. Sapphire Mountain Hand Crafts. Anything I have, any project I have will be listed below. So um, so you'll be, and I'll, to the extent that there are links on where you can find it, I will include that. So, but yeah, Sapphire Mountain Hand Crafts is, is where they are. So I am now working on, I did work on Little Women, and I'm doing this on 32 count even weave. Um, it's Vellum by Picture This Plus, and I'm doing this two over two with the call for DMC. And this is a new start and a finish for now, which means that I'm not done, but I did finish what was released. And here is part one. So get a little closer so you can see that. Um, it is not... Um, This took longer than I thought it would, being honest. So like, I don't know why, why for me, it, it, like I worked on it for like four days. Um, I, I think it's because there's a lot of color changes in the lettering. And, um, and I also frogged a lot. This one, this one ended up having a lot of frogs in it. And <laughs> I don't know why I, I had some, some weird hiccup with, with, with it. Um, but, but yeah, so there we are. I am listening to the Audible. I'm listening to the free Audible. So if you are a member of Audible, you can get this um, as, as part of the membership, um, which is being read by Laura Dern. I am not like caught up with the with the pacing, um, but, but I am listening to it. And um, it is an interesting adaptation 
um, because there is a little bit of um, she's reading part of, she's reading the book but then there's also a little bit of like scenes there's scenes in it um, with uh, with the March girls and everything so it's interesting um, it, it, I, a little bit different from what I'm used to I don't listen to I rarely listen to audibles being real like I most of the time when I do listen to an audible book it's usually nonfiction so this is one of the first fictions that I've read um, with an audible and so I just didn't know what to expect so it's interesting um, I recommend it I guess <laughs> um, but yeah and so this one I officially started on June 12th and um, all together again if I counted the stitching correctly this one was 1385 stitches Oh, I worked on it for six days, not four days. Um, but yeah. So, look at me. I mean, with the Sal Sal, I guess I was staying on top of my Sal. <laughs> and it's currently living in a Love You More studio um, book sleeve. This is the standard size, so it's um, the smaller size. So, there you go. Alright, next up. I got everything kind of in a weird positioning. We're gonna now we're in whips. Now we're we're wholly at whips. I have no no more. Um, sorry, I got a little pop up on my computer for all the fun stuff there. And um, so now we're at whips. No more finishes. So next up was at the very beginning of the month. Um, Sailor Moon Eternals, the two part movie, came out on Netflix, and so. In anticipation of that movie coming out, I am a Sailor Moon fan. I am a bit of a Moonie. Um, my favorite scout is Sailor Saturn. And um, I was working on the Lunar Princess Sal um, by Sleeping Luna Designs. And um, I don't have a picture of what it will look like when it's done, but this is effectively the design. Um, so it, this is obviously a computer rendering of it. So that is what I'm working on. And um, so I was working on, um, I was stitching on it while we were rewatching Sailor Moon Crystal to get ready for the movie to come out. And then, of course, while the, mo well, the movie was on, to the extent I could stitch and pay attention, I worked on Sailor Moon. Now, I did not get very far. Um, I added, I am working on the rose. Now, I am doing this on 32 count, um, I think it's a, I'm not very organized today, my apologies. Um, this is 32 count Even We Phantom by Picture Disc Plus, and um, I'm doing this 2 over 2 with the called for DMC, um, so so that's where we are. The, it, the, the fabric is actually a little darker in person, the light is making it look a lot lighter than it is um, and I love I, it, it's a beautiful fabric I am enjoying working on, on it um, I'm hoping I'm not sure when it's going to come back out um, I want to work on it a little bit every every month because I do want to keep movement on it um, but the um, but we'll see I have a lot of plans I got a lot of things I'm trying to get done this year, and so so we'll see. Uh, when you're stitching for just yourself, sometimes it doesn't take priority. So, um, but that's where we are on that one. And on this one, I stitch. I put in uh, 424 stitches, working on it over three days. And um, that one I know because I am using um, Pattern Keeper to to track track that. Now that one is living in my 805 stitcher bag. My little geishas and on the inside is sushi <laughs> so um, I love that All right. next up is I'm kind of going to order of like smallest to largest in terms of accomplishments um, I was working again working on my sal sals um, various sals that I project that were part of sales and I am trying to catch up on Lindy Stitches Funky Menagerie. So this is what it will look like when it's done. By the way y'all, this is not really a haul, but I finally set up my color printer and I'm in my two month um, trial 
free trial subscription for the ink refill. And so I can print as much as I want. So I'm printing everything on paper. <laughs> and so, and I'm hoping this means I won't have to edit the video, right? Hopefully once it's done, short of like some weird thing happening or I need to go in and cut something out, I can just process it and get it up on the video. That sounds like a good plan, doesn't it? Anyways, so here's Lindy Stitches, um, Funky Menagerie, super behind on it. And it lives in my 805 exclusive um, blue footed booty pattern. I just decided that if it's an animal from Lindy Stitches, it's just going to live in this. Oops, I just dropped the reminder um, on there. So anyway, so I am doing this on the called for fabric, which is the um, 32 cal flax linen from Zygarde. I'm doing it two over two with the called for DNC. And this is where I got to. Oops. My camera does not want, if I move it a little bit, it's odd. So what I did was that last time you saw it, um, I need to fold this so I can point to where we are. The last time you saw it, I had just, I so I was at this, I had done the turtle and I had done this little pink flower. So what I completed was um, the rest of this border down the edge. This is the bottom of the border. And I did the ant eater. So that's what I got done um, in this month working on, on Lindy Stitches, um, Funky Menagerie. And um, so yeah, so that's where we are. And I put in on that 530 stitches. Um, and I worked on that, I think. I only worked on that on one day. So it must have been on a day off or on our weekend day um, for me to work on it. Um, basically, I, I kind of did a, a challenge for magic stitches and whatever that was. That's what I saw. So that is the imagery. Boop, boop. All right, next up is um, I am very, you know, oh, yay for doing the minimum, but at the same time, yay for finally doing it. Um, the United States has officially recognized Juneteenth as a federal holiday. And um, now I'm from Texas and Juneteenth is actually has been the state holiday for many, many, uh, since 1980, I want to say. It's actually been a state holiday for a very long time. I've always grown up knowing what Juneteenth was and, um, and seeing people celebrating it and everything. And so, um, so it's actually fantastic to see that the rest of the country has embraced it for what it is. And, um, and for those of you who don't know, Juneteenth is actually the day that the enslaved persons here in the state of Texas um, were told um, that of the Emancipation Proclamation that they were freed. And um, Texas was the last state, this was the last hold out basically where um, people had not learned of the of, of their freedom and um, and so it's, it's it's sometimes known as a black emancipation day or a black freedom day and um, and so but that is that is its history for those of you who are not aware of it and it takes on a lot of different meanings for different people um, but at the end of the day what it really means is the representation of all um, enslaved folks in the in the United States at that point in time were free and, and that is a good thing and I had kind of made a decision that for this year I I am not a super patriotic um, stitcher I, I don't I don't like I may stitch on something that is patriotic but it's not because it's a patriotic piece that I like so I'm like one of my whips is Liberty Quaker um, let's be real I like the squirrel so, um, and, and it's, you know, it's not that I don't love my country or I'm proud of it in some ways. It's, I'm also not so, you know, keen on it in, in other ways. Um, but if you love something, you want it to be better, right? So it's, um, but, but it's not my stitching style. I don't tend to, to like, like when I see people, I think, oh, that's pretty, but I don't tend to do, want to do it. So, um, but I did start on MLK Day, on Martin Luther King Day this year. I had a new start for Stone Creek Stitch Works MLK Sampler right here. And so I made a decision that for every patriotic holiday in at least 2021, 
I was going to work on the MLKL stampler. So on the weekend of Juneteenth, um, in celebration of that, I worked on the MLK sampler. And this is where I got to. And so um, basically, I had already finished the words and the border down to here. I did have to frog um, part of, I'm a little OCD y'all, I just am. I like things to line up and when they don't line up, I'm always like, why? And I was able to figure out that I had miscounted by a thread um, in this little area right here. And so I went ahead and frogged that and now everything lines up. So I finished down this border and then I worked on um, this part of the, of the piece. So that's where we are, my RPG. Um, needle minder there. I am going to, oops, get that there. Um, it is um, July 4th, Independence Day here in the United States this weekend. I'm going to work on this this weekend. A little bit of a, a preview of plants um, because it is a patriotic day. Um, I do believe that eventually and always the United States does do what's right. It just takes a while. So, you just got to keep fighting the good fight because the time is always right to do what is right. Right? So, here we are. Yay! Um, and that one lives in my 805 Stitcher Ruth Bader Ginsburg bag. And you won't be able to see on the inside, but on the inside is where I do that. So, super excited about that. I know, it's a lot. You're like, wait, Jesse, it's already half hour in. Aren't you done yet? No, I still got two more pieces. All right, so for WIPCO for the month of June, my, the numbers that were called were the same piece. They were both the same piece, which was Happily Ever After by the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. So this is the piece that I'm working on. And, um, and so not part of a sal, but I'm pretty sure it was originally a sal. When it first came out, I'm pretty sure it was the Happily Ever After sal. So we're going to call it a sal as part of the sal sals. And um, so, so here it is. And last time you saw it, I had done, I, I had finished the happily ever after banner. So that is all I had done. And I think I had told you that I was planning on flanking the banner and I ended up doing that. Um, and so this is where we are. Uh, it is also living in my 805 embroidery bag here. And so... Oh, I'm okay. I'm doing that on 36 count Heartland um, Picture Disc Plus. Two over two with the call for DMC. So, but here we are on Happily Ever After. Now, this is the kit provided by the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. So, I am doing this on um, 30, 28 count Cashel Linen. This is Crystal Helix by Picture Disc Plus. And I'm doing this two over two with the call for DMC. So here is where we are. So I finished Around the World in 80 Days. And um, the Owl and the Cat. I actually don't know what, what I don't know what's in it. Owl and the Cat. Uh, so, and that, I obviously have not finished this block out yet. I basically got to a challenge for uh, Magical Stitches. Uh, I will probably pull this out at least one day or two days um, in the month of July to finish out the, the finish out the block. Um, so, but, but that's where, that's where we are. And, um, for happily ever after I put in 1,815 stitches. So, so that's where we are. And I did that all over the course of four days now, on the MLK. Um, I did 507 stitches on that. So but yeah, there we are. This is cute. I love frosted pumpkin. It's, just, it, it's they make you happy, right? They're just like mm, happy patterns. So, um, but I'll just continue to work on that um, to finish off that block, and we'll see what happens after that. Um, I guess that's the beauty of having a lot of whips. You just never know what you're gonna work on, right? Last but not least is my last new start. Again, we're working on sales for the month. So this is. The Trans Pride Tapestry. That is what we will look like when it is done. Um, and 
this is um, the artwork is I realize I haven't been telling you anything about any of the, the patterns. I'm just all out of it today. I'm just like doing everything wrong. Anyways, um, but the the Transpy Tapestry, the designs by D20 based on the artwork of Corey Nankin. I am going to be doing this on 16 count Ada Hue by Fortnite Fabrics, which was the fabric that came out of the Black Needle Society's rainbow stitching um, subscription box that was in May. So here is where I got to. And I'm doing this two over one um, because this is Ada. Uh, my goal was to outline the unicorn. So I'd started in the middle and I was gonna try as part of the Transtastic Sal, which is now the Transtastic Summer. Um, my goal was to outline the unicorn um, in the month of July. That did not happen. And what you may be able to barely see is that I have a little bit of stitching right here because I had to do some serious surgery on the back and like taking out some stitches and having to cover it and everything. Um, I was off by, by a stitch and, um, and I kind of figured, try to figure out if I could make the adjustments um, on my own and frankly I just don't feel like I have the confidence to be able to do that and um, so I went ahead and frogged out uh, where the mistake was moved everything back over and and corrected it and um, in total I put in 1177 stitches probably a good 300 of those were frogging and redoing which was unfortunate but it's a super cute pattern. It is big. It's a lot bigger than you think it will be. Um, I do think that once I get the outline done, it's going to end up being a pretty, I don't want to say it's a fast stitch because there is a lot of filling in that has to happen. Um, but I think that it will become a lot, it will be really good, like um, we can't count type of thing, right? Like you, you can have busy hands, um, but not necessarily be able to focus on the count. So, so that is it. Um, so that's all my projects. I think that's enough, right? Yeah, I think so too. Um, so, let's talk about some haul. I don't have a whole lot of haul. Um, I didn't purchase that much. I do belong to three Fabric of the Month clubs. And so I have all of those fabrics. So the first one is that I belong to the Rogue Stitching Fabric of the Month. And so this is, and I do get a 30 count Lugana. Um, and I get that from everybody, 30 count Lugana. Because you can't get um, lemon. You can't get into any lemon clubs. And being honest, it, it, Lugana is my preferred. I prefer an even weave. Um, and I like Lugana. So, but this one is from Atomic Ranch Fabric. I don't actually know what the color. Oh, Joy Lynn. Joy Lynn is the color. And look at this. Look at this red. I know. I love it. So, um, I'm going to run the stitch on it. I don't know. But I'm going to find something. Usually I think like a ink circles or something. I actually am working on an idea right now. Something completely unrelated. But that's it. Um, but yeah, so there's that. I also was able to join the color and cotton back in May. So this is my second month. So this is for June. Again, everything is on the 32 count Lugana. And this is called Fieldstone from Color and Cotton. Oh, that's a little washed out. Um, it's looking very gray on the screen. There is definitely a bit of a, a lavender. I, you know, lavender is the right color. There's a little bit more of a bluish purple undertone to it than what you're seeing on the screen. So, but yeah, so there's that. And this month for June, I was able to get into the Fiberlicious um, Fabric of the Month Club. Um, people were being kind of mean to her. People canceled their subscription. Their loss 
my game I was able to join and this is peach of my heart oh uh, I'm gonna have to figure out my lighting I thought that I had figured that out oh look oh look at that being so bright like let's see <laughs> clearly not very good anyway so that is um, so it's a little peachy and uh, I love it um, I'm really excited to be part of five delicious support Asian-owned businesses. Um, and then last but not least, I did order a couple of things from Top Knot Stitcher, and everyone has already seen it. Oops, sorry, I dropped something. Doop, 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 doop. Going down, getting things I dropped. Um, and now everyone's already seen this because how can you not? It is the two-parter from Blue Flower. In Lindy Stitches. Oh, I got this backwards. Here's Lindy Stitches. Oh, here. I'm going to do some crinkling so that I can take this out so that you can see it. Um, but this is the Saltwater Scrapbook. And so here's Lindy Stitches. And, um, right? Everyone's saying mine, mine, mine when they see that, right? Because of those seagulls. But I love the little boat with the waves and that little silly little hammerhead shark and this mustache oh my gosh this crazy mustache and who doesn't love an octopus you right i mean that's really pretty awesome and of course you can't just buy part one you got to buy part two and it is the blue flower is part two and this one of course you see hey janine makes a great squirrel doesn't she but yeah and then you have, of course, you're diving into the water here. Everyone loves to be by the sea. And this little snazzy octopus with his hat. Um, I don't know if I am planning on um, doing it has the, has the panel or has little pillows. We're going to wait and see how I feel. But um, I had hoped to kind of start on it this um, this summer but I don't know that might not happen hmm. what do you think do you feel stuff I do have the fancy floss. I ordered the thread pack from Top Knot Stitcher. I know there's some controversy involving Weeks Dye Works and their very slow decision to change their name or the Confederate Gray color. But I went ahead and got the called for floss. Um, what do you think? I gotta get the DMC out and see how it works. We might have just kitted up the the, the um, salt scrapbook. Hmm. All right. Well, you can't have just two patterns and thread tra travel by themselves. They have to have a companion. And so I got Luminous Fiber Arts. Counting is hard because yo, isn't it? Like when I saw that, I'm like, I gotta get that. The amount of frogging that I do, this belongs in my room, mm -hmm, for sure. My husband is about to come out of the office, which means I should wrap this up. Actually, he just closed the door because he's about to get into a meeting. Anyways, so this counting is hard. That's it for my haul. So, so what's next? What's next for Jesse in the month of July? So, if you have watched me before, you may be aware that I am also a quilter. Go, go, quilt and stitch. Stitch and quilt, you know, I guess it's in the name. Um, I'm going to be going to two quilt retreats um, later on this month. Um, in the last two weekends of July, I'm going to two different retreats. And so I'm hoping to have some quilting to show everybody in some time. Um, we'll see. We'll see what, what I can get done in those two in those two retreats. I'll be gone for four days on both for both of those retreats. So that's good, solid quilting time uh, but it also means that I might not have as much stitching time so um, so we'll see 
and um, but for stitching purposes, so um, for Whip Go, Jessie Marie um, does stuff, and I'll link everything below. Um, she called the numbers for the month of July, and for me, the numbers were 2 and 12. Not for me. The number she called was 2 and 12. And for me, those projects are no face knitting. So I'll be working on that this month. Um, usually, um, my, my goal for WIPGO is 10 hours on a project, and it kind of pretty much works out to be about 1,500 stitches. Um, and so I do that for one of my magical stitches, like the monthly challenges. That's what I put in about 1,500 stitches, and I call that WIPGO done. My autofocus is really having a hard time. I figure out where I am. It's funny. Sorry if that just gave you some vertigo. Um, so, so one is no face knitting, so I'll be working on that. The second project that was called was for um, Halloween. It was a trick or treat sampler by Mary Ingelbright. I'm glad you just saw. I just finished it, so I'm not going to work on that. Now, that being said, um, I am going to work on a project that was called earlier in the year, but I didn't have the fabric. I, I I hadn't quite kitted it. So earlier in the year in January, Seize the Day was called for me. And I finally have everything I need. It's fully kitted now. So I'm going to have a new start for Seize the Day um, this summer, um, for this July, which I figured, you know, it's summer. I'm going to stitch summer. So here we are. So I'm going to work on that. And, um, and then the last thing that I'm hoping to work on um, for sure in the month of J July is going to be the sing a song sampler. Now I am doing the con uh, by um, so I'm doing this conversion. This was done by Jennifer Drinka, and I did pull this off of Jan Hicks Creates website. And um, so I'm going to be working on the sing a song sampler her as well. So so that's kind of my those are my plans. I'm going to quilt. I'm going to do some stitching on those on those projects, and um, yeah, I guess that's it. I'm going to try to keep up with Little Women. Part 2 did come out today, yesterday. I printed it today, so I think I got it last night, um, and so I'll work on, I'll try to keep up with Little Women, and I'll continue to work on Transtastic Sal. Uh, you don't know this about me? I'm going to just go ahead and share. I am a stitch what you want when you want. I try to fit everything into some kind of a challenge um, on magical stitches or whip go or something like that. But I'm just going to do whatever I feel like I'm going to, I'm going to do. Um, I'm not going to be doing Jolly July um, for, for this year. Um, I'm going to focus on kind of summer stitching and, um, you know, and, and, and just kind of move forward on that. I kind of, I am a progress stitcher, which is that I like to see a project come together and get closer. So as I get closer to finishes or seeing things get there, I get a little bit excited. I get what I called finish fever. And, um, and so, so we're going to kind of see, um, what I can do. I'm going to try, I'm going to try to keep up with some things. Is that it? I think that's everything that is going on. Floss tubers. Flavor. What's the point of taking notes if you're not going to look at your notes, Jess? So I wanted to mention two floss tubers that um, that I am watching, and everyone is already seeing her and her wonderfully fun husband David. But I really have enjoyed Mad Morty, and um, so she has a brilliant way of talking about her pieces, and um, they are a little bit on the gothic side, which I think is fantastic. I had taken a day off in June and. Um, actually, I don't. I think it was actually for Juneteenth. I think it was the day I was off for Juneteenth, and I was binging all of Mad Morty's uh, videos for that day because I don't go. I usually don't go back and watch everyone's videos unless they're early enough in their in their video stream that I can that it won't be too difficult. But usually, I just watch one or two back and then I just go forward. And but this particular case, I was able to watch the whole thing. And my husband came in a little break or lunch or something like that because I was in the living room watching it on the TV and and David was on the um, on the screen and he had a shirt on for a band that I believe I think was Triumphant was the band that he had the the shirt that he was on and my husband was really cute and he was like he, and he, and he looked at it and he goes and he told me a story about some of his memories of the 
my, my husband is a veteran. He was a Marine. And I'm um, talking about being on the boat, listening to the album. And, you know, he was like, well, good times, good times. And he mentioned a concert he had gone to with them. So my husband is a big metal fan, like a um, super big metal fan. I like rock. Like, I'm going to, right. Uh, so I like progressive metal. This is it give you a sense of the type of music I listen to. But also that being said, I love great singer-songwriters, and I have never missed a Kelly Clarkson con um, concert that's come through Houston. So, like, my my music range is, so it's his, he goes to Kelly Clarkson with me, too. So, <laughs> it's like, you know, but he, he, but if you're talking about, like, if you're going to ask him what his favorite form of music is, and what he's really into, it's obviously metal. And, um, and so it was kind of cute to listen to him talk about um, the band and seeing it, and then he kind of looked at the background of the screen is a film in front of a bookshelf and it's getting a little bit gothic I don't know how my husband was able to look at the books and know themselves but then he was like and then he turned around and he declared we are friends <laughs> so there you go my husband James that's his name um, is um has declared himself friends with Mad Morty and David <laughs> so um it was um it was really kind of funny but either regardless watch the Watch their floss tubes. They're actually a very sweet couple, and um, and the and the work is beautiful. And um, and they both and they both cross stitch, and so um, and so they both show their their projects. And so that is my first floss tube recommendation. They have more subscribers than me. They probably already, you know, they don't want me giving them a shout out. But that's it. The other one is also um, a new cross um, a new floss tuber. Um, I actually don't know. I. I have a feeling she may have done videos before and this may be just a new channel for her, but I don't know for, for sure. But this is Vintage SoGal. I really have, um, have, have, I thought she was a lot of fun, seems to have a lot of projects that I find really interesting and has a great way of kind of talking about her work. And, um, and so I'm going to also recommend that you go hang out and take a look at um, Vintage um, SoGal. Um, they're both under the 100,000 subscribers club, so let's try to get them up and over um, a thousand subscribers because I think they both deserve it. Um, so, but I think that's pretty much it. Just under 50 minutes, it looks like, when it's all said and done. Oh, and has a little bit of a milestone. Um, my floss tube anniversary was on June 20th, is when I uploaded my very first video. And so we are officially in season two <laughs> of, of my of my floss tube videos. I hope to be able to sustain them. I really have enjoyed doing it and meeting everybody that I have met over the course of this past year doing my own videos and of course having watched videos before that and this is a wonderful community and um, you know and, and whether you're into craftivism or not you know uh, you know I hope that we are able to have conversations about sometimes difficult things and in the way in the role that crafting can can help with us dealing with some of that. Um, art has always been political and art has also just been about aesthetics and it's okay to have both and so um, so thank you so much for everyone who has stayed with me this year everyone who's joined me over the course of the year who's going to continue on with with me um, I want to let you know that I am hoping that maybe I'll hit a milestone of 500 subscribers um, I don't know when that's gonna happen it could be three years from now for all I know but that is when I'm planning my next giveaway at um, at 500 subscribers and um you know and i'm putting i'm slowly but surely putting a little package together of things to send to to um to to the to the winners so um but yeah i think i think that's it and in terms of life updates i don't really have any june was pretty um you know it's just june i did end up taking a few days off i needed a mental break i took a mental break um, from work, and that was that I took it off my email, and I did some cross-stitching, I watched a lot of TV, um, like, it was one of those, like, I called it a braincation, is actually what I was calling it, um, which, right, my husband continued to work, I was just sitting at home doing nothing, it's a hobbies, and cleaning, and, and all that kind of stuff, and it's kind of important to have some self-care, we are still in the middle of work, recovering from COVID. We're not quite 100% there yet. We're still working from home. Um, it is very stressful um, still. And and I had recognized that I was burnt out. And 
self-care matters and frankly you should take your vacation time for anyone who's sitting on vacation time because it's part of your compensation take your time and so um so that was really nice we also did go visit um my in-laws for my father-in-law's um uh for father's day <laughs> so so we did go visit uh, visit them and um, we're expecting our new couch at the end of the month so that's exciting and um but i but otherwise that's it there's really nothing to talk about in terms of my life we're pretty boring i mean there's worse ways to be right so anyways i hope everyone is having a fantastic day wherever you are if you happen to be in the united states um and you are celebrating the holiday i hope that you have a happy and safe holiday um if you are a person who is shooting able to shoot off fireworks in your neighborhood maybe reconsider that dogs get scared squirrels get scared there are people who get scared by that i am actually pro going away to watch fireworks in a designated location um to keep all your neighbors safe and happy but um, but i hopefully you will have a safe and happy um independence day weekend and um, to my neighbors in in the north i understand that um we are discussing not we are discovering we the families knew that their children were missing um, but we but the other folks are now realizing that the children went missing um and that there was a lot of decisions about canceling canada day i am not a canadian i'm not here to to tell you what to do or not to do as it relates to your own nation and and everything but that being said i am a firm believer that you know you have to acknowledge the atrocities that were committed to the first peoples and the fact that we are on their lands and we did terrible things so the united states did the same thing um and you know and to atone for 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 that and to acknowledge it and and yeah and sometimes it does mean that it makes patriotic days complicated and difficult to to celebrate and so even for my americans who find independence day to be a difficult holiday um uh, that's understandable and that's okay too and it's okay to have hard conversations and it's okay to have complex feelings about it right like it's totally okay to to be prideful to a certain extent right i mean we did establish the united states did establish a democracy and you know and it, it, it launched the american dream that is a dream for many people in the in the world now um and you know and it, it it created a domino effect for for the rest of the world so there is there is pride in in some of the accomplishments that the united states has done um as a result of being the united states but it's also okay to be ashamed and um, and not happy with some of its history um because at the same time that we were declaring independence we also enslaved other people and um and stole land from other people and and that's okay to have complex feelings about that and and i hope that people will have the conversation and um you know we will eventually we have to get to a place of peace around it um but you can only get to a place of peace around it when you hear about the harm that you have done just think about like how it is when you talk to your kids about like when they hurt somebody right it's like until someone feels that the apology is real and that they're heard and that there is an effort to atone um the apology means nothing so anyways that's where i sit hopefully no one finds that controversial if you do you can always give me a thumbs down and unsubscribe um but um i hopefully you hopefully you won't um and i'll see you next time in the meantime have a stitching good time and i'll see you probably in a month Take care. Bye.